Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays. Last year I made a video talking about interplanetary logistics, that is, ways of moving materials between planets in Factorio Space Exploration 0.5. Since then, version 0.6 has been released and it's changed things up significantly by adding space elevators. There are still four ways to transport goods between planets, even if the elevators add a twist, and whilst you'll unlock them one at a time, there are trade-offs between them that mean you may decide to continue using the older ones, even after the later ones are available. The smallest and simplest option is the delivery cannon. Once set up, the only consumable is delivery cannon capsules, which can be made relatively easily on most planets from local resources. Once you've built a delivery cannon capsule, it can be loaded into a delivery cannon with a stack of a basic resource and sent to any other location in the same solar system. Each delivery cannon can be configured to target a single delivery cannon chest, which receives the supplies to then be unloaded onto belts like with any other chest. If you want, you can have multiple delivery cannons delivering to one chest, but you can't make one cannon automatically deliver to multiple chests. Making delivery cannon capsules does require all of the basic resources in one form or another, but the infrastructure to build them is fairly simple, and planets generally have most of the basic resources available. For the exotic materials, it's quite possible to use core mining to extract resources, and then use the normal core chunks produced during processing to supply the parts to create the delivery cannon capsules. For us, this worked in theory. But with four people playing, we were using the resources faster than the core mining could realistically produce them. To solve this, we had to start normal mining from ore patches, and then topping up the capsule construction supplies by using additional delivery cannons on Norvis, controlled by signal transmitters. With a single player, you might find that the supplies from core mining are sufficient, depending on how quickly you build. So, on the positive side, delivery cannon capsules are quite simple, and they don't require any fuel. On the negative side, they only carry a single stack and they reload fairly slowly, so high throughput is difficult. And I did say that they don't take fuel, however they do require power. For low throughput, this generally isn't a problem, they only use 50 megawatts each while charging, but if you have several cannons firing constantly, you'll need to make sure your power grid can cope. You can only ship certain resource types around. Basic resources such as ores and metals are fine, but manufactured goods can't take the impact of launch and landing. You will also need some form of communication system to ensure that the cannon stops firing before the receiver chest is full, since sending a capsule to a full chest will cause an explosion, damage to the surrounding area and loss of most of the resources you are sending. But don't worry, I've shown you how to set that up in another video. Finally, don't forget that they only work inside the current solar system, you can't send them into Stella. The next option is the cargo rocket. These massive rockets can carry 500 stacks of absolutely anything at once, can go anywhere and even allow the player to ride along or a Spidertron to land and automatically deploy. However, as you'd expect, the rockets are much more expensive to make and the assembly is significantly more complicated using more advanced intermediate components. Because the rocket carries so much cargo, the cost isn't quite as bad as it initially seems, however the construction process is still complicated enough that I wouldn't want to build it up on an outpost. Rockets will fly to any landing pad with the correct name, and won't leave until the landing pad they're headed for is empty, which means you don't need any communication systems for very basic rocket infrastructure, and you only need one rocket launch silo per resource, instead of needing one for each destination. You will need a separate landing pad for each resource, or work out a communication system that will allow you to send mixed rockets. Where delivery cannons are many to one, rockets are typically one to many, but if you have multiple sources of a resource, such as stone or sand, then you could set up a many to many system for a single resource. This makes things a bit simpler to set up, however you will probably want to set up a system to ship the rocket parts and rocket capsules out from your central factory when the outpost starts to run low, and you'll need to generate rocket fuel on site. The amount of rocket fuel used depends on the size of the planet it's leaving and how far the rocket is travelling, but it can require very large amounts of going between planets. Another major downside of rockets is that they have a tendency to lose cargo. Sometimes the rocket will crash on landing, scattering the cargo across the landscape, and even on a successful landing, a percentage of the cargo will be lost, so make sure you pack spares. 
Later on, you'll do research into rocket improvements. These reduce the amount of cargo lost, lower the chance of crashing, and also increase the number of rocket parts you get back for reuse. But by the time you've made rockets decently cheap, you'll probably have spaceships anyway, and the reuse still doesn't include fuel, which is a large part of the cost. The rocket parts that you get back will be left at the destination too. You'll need to work out how you want to transport them back to where they're needed, but at least you can stack them, combining five rocket parts into a single item, meaning you can fit almost 24 rockets worth of parts and capsules into a resupply rocket. I should also mention that the flexibility of rockets makes them very useful for establishing new outposts. You can fly out in your rocket with all the machines you need, that 500 stack inventory will go a long way but don't forget to consider how you're going to get back since you won't have your rocket anymore, and that a chunk of whatever you pack will be lost during the crash landing. I recommend checking out my What to Take to Space video for a useful extra trick for early game space travel in 0.6. The next option you'll discover is spaceships. Finally, we've found a fully reusable transport system. Spaceships can be flown manually or programmed to follow a specific route, and you can see my spaceship automation video for more information on this. The only resource that gets consumed with spaceships is fuel, and since you can send your ship out with enough fuel for the complete round trip, this means that your outposts can now concentrate on just resource extraction, rather than having to build and fuel rockets as well. Spaceships can run on several different fuel types. Rocket fuel is needed in huge quantities, but allows ships to take off from planetoids and is available from the very start. Ion stream is available soon after, but this only allows the ship to move through space and requires a lot of electricity but a tank of fuel will take the ship a lot further. Antimatter fuel is very late game and is the best of both, providing lots of speed and range whilst also allowing the ship to take off from planets. Spaceships are very flexible. You can get a spaceship to do almost anything you want as they are completely configured through the circuit network. This does make them more complicated, but it also makes them more flexible. Think trains, but with more options and a much more complicated user interface. Spaceships tend to be harder to load and unload quickly and efficiently in space exploration, unless you've also added loaders or fast long inserters to the game. This can be improved dramatically by having trains drive onto your spaceships, however this is significantly more complicated and reduces the amount of cargo that a ship can carry. They also take time to fly between locations, whereas all the other options are almost instantaneous. When you first start building spaceships, you'll only be able to fit a single warehouse into them, giving them the same capacity as a rocket, but after you've done more research you'll be able to make much bigger spaceships with far more fuel and storage space. As other major advantages, spaceships are the only system that can carry fluids between planets without using barrels, and you can also use them for two-way transport, perhaps taking iron and sulphur out to a mining colony to be made into acid, and then bringing the dug-up resource back in the same warehouses. Our current spaceships take this to the extreme, shipping out many different supplies for processing from vulcanite or iron to manufactured items like meteor defence ammo and train batteries, and then bringing back the desired resource and all the useful byproducts from processing. Spaceships pair extremely well with the newly added space elevators. The elevators allow your trains to run from the surface of the planet up into orbit, meaning that you can easily bring the resources up to the spaceships so they don't have to land on the planet. This means that you don't need the rocket boosters to leave the planet and can just use ion engines, saving an enormous amount of rocket fuel in the mid-game. Space elevators do require elevator cable to be provided. This is used up at a steady rate, typically around 4 to 6 per minute, and if the elevator runs out it will collapse, requiring a large quantity of new cable to be delivered to rebuild it. Whilst this won't cost any extra to rebuild versus keeping it supplied, cutting off the elevator temporarily can cause issues. A functional elevator can also transfer power, meaning you can have a large solar array in orbit powering your base from above, increasing the solar efficiency and neatly getting around the requirements for fields of accumulators. Elevators are great, but the cable is made from three of the exotic materials, which means that it's quite expensive, and you need to have the infrastructure up and running before you can start to use them. They're also fantastic for bringing supplies up to Norbit from the ground very, very cheaply and easily, allowing you to do a lot more of your processing on the ground where productivity modules work. The fourth and final option is ArcoLink storage chests. These are chests with a shared inventory which can be placed on different planets. Anything you put in one chest will be available in the other. This allows for instantaneous transport of goods as fast as eight inserters can load them. 
The upsides are pretty obvious. No ongoing resource costs and no limit on what can be transported, apart from liquids. The very significant downsides are that they are extremely late game, requiring Deep Space Science 4, and they require Arcospheres to build, and Arcospheres are very hard to get hold of. I haven't used these chests yet in my playthroughs, and to be honest, I don't really expect to. I think there are more valuable uses for the Arcospheres, I find, but there's a very valid argument that having one to bring Naquatite back in some form is worthwhile, especially if you can use very fast belts and loaders. So, those are your options. Let's take a look at the resource costs of each one. I'm going to ignore the setup costs, because this will tend towards zero as you deliver more and more resources. To keep things simple, each item of ore or stone that you pull out of the ground costs one, except for crude oil, which I'm going to say is worth 0.1, as fluids are denser in Factorio. Water is free. From this, we can find the costs of various products. Iron plates cost one iron ore, ignoring productivity bonuses, and so they have a cost of one. Green circuits cost three copper cables and one stone tablet, or 1.5 copper and 0.5 stone, giving a total cost of two. Following this logic, Vulcanite blocks and cryonite rods cost about 10, beryllium plates are 12 and a half, and iridium plate just over 60. Using this method, a delivery cannon capsule costs 130 resources and a rocket costs 82,800, which comes to 166 per stack. These numbers are closer than they were in 0.5, and when you consider that you start off with a 20% rocket reusability, the costs are virtually identical, and the rocket will only get cheaper as you do more research into reusability. However, you do still need to think about the logistics for getting the rocket parts to where they're needed, which is about a 4% increase, and more seriously, the fuel costs. This varies depending on the size of the planet you're launching from and how far the rocket is going, but it's typically tens of thousands of liquid rocket fuel, costing an additional 10 to 50,000 resources if made from oil. The copper recipe for fuel is a tenth the cost in resources, but requires a lot more processing time and machines. If you're on a vulcanite planet, you can use the third pyroflux recipe, which is somewhere in between, but taking the oil recipe as standard, this adds between 20 and 100 onto the cost per stack, in the worst case almost doubling the cost of using rockets, and this cost doesn't go down with reusability research. Another important consideration is what you're transporting. With the exception of shipping from Norvis to Norbit, all of my bulk shipping has been of basic resources which can be sent by delivery cannon. However, if you want to send, say, red circuits somewhere, it takes several stacks of ingredients to make one stack of red circuits, making the cargo rocket immediately far cheaper than the delivery cannon. However, as I said, none of the processes we're performing on exoplanets require complex inputs. It's all vulcanite or cryonite for smelting, or sulphur and iron for making acid. There are alternative recipes available for making delivery cannon capsules and rocket parts, which use iridium and beryllium respectively. The delivery cannon capsule recipe is slightly more expensive at 137 resources. However, if you're on an iridium planet and have oil available, this could be much easier than finding the supplies of iron, copper and stone that you would otherwise need. Elsewhere, I would consider it to be basically useless, because it's more expensive and requires an exotic ingredient. The cargo rocket parts, however, are much cheaper, costing 464 instead of 828, slightly more than half, in exchange for the additional complexity of supplying the beryllium. It's also quite an easy research, only requiring the very first space science pack. This one I think is worth seriously considering. Finally, there is an additional recipe using nanomaterial for space elevator cable, but this one is so expensive that I gave up partway through adding the costs up. Working out the costs of spaceships is also tricky, and the costs are effectively doubled because the spaceship needs to come back as well. Taking off from a planet is expensive, with a small rocket-sized spaceship costing 165 gigajoules to leave Norvis, which, if using rockets, comes out to 32,000 resources just to leave the ground. Fuel cost for the flight is, is harder to estimate, as it depends on flight time, but my testing showed perhaps a few tens of thousands to travel between planets with rocket engines, or up to a couple of hundred with iron engines. Ion engines are enormously efficient, but make up for that with the electricity requirements both for making the fuel and running the engines. This brings the cost of transport with a spaceship to roughly 140 per stack if you're using just rocket engines and taking off from planets, or to less than one per stack if you're flying from orbit to orbit with ion engines. That's a very big range. 
Finally, let's take a look at the cost of running a space elevator. This allows you to bring resources up from the ground without massive rockets and allows you to get that gloriously cheap ion engine powered spaceship. Unfortunately, space elevators use elevator cable and unlike everything else, this gets used up at a constant rate over time, plus a little extra for anything that's brought up or down. This consumption is typically around 4 cables per minute and a tiny tiny fraction for each stack that's brought up or down. Elevator cable requires lots of exotic materials and costs 310 per piece, giving us a per minute cost for Norvis of about 1240 and that's whether you're shipping resources through it or not. Whether this is worth it is up to you to decide, but remember it also passes power down the cable as well. Our Norvian space elevator has trains running up it several times per minute, giving a cost per stack of under 10. However, on other planets, the elevators are used much less, making them effectively many times the price. However, as long as a spaceship departs each planet every half hour, they will still be cheaper than blasting off from the surface. I'm not going to try to give a cost for Arco chests, because it's meaningless in this comparison. It's a one-off cost, but it also uses items which are effectively priceless on my scale, because they're not unlimited in the same way that everything else is. Oh, that's a lot of numbers. I hope you're still here. In summary, delivery cannons are cheaper initially because of the fuel requirements of rockets, but once you've got rocket reuse up to about 50% through research, cargo rockets become cheaper if your planet has a supply of oil. Early spaceships with rocket engines taking off from planets are a similar price too, perhaps a little more expensive depending on the route. But if you build ion engines and elevators, transport costs disappear almost entirely and are replaced by the ongoing cost of maintaining the elevators. Arco chests are a special case and very hard to compare, but could be useful in very niche situations. That covers the four different systems available for transporting goods. In my first game, I used all of the first three for slightly different reasons. Delivery cannons were great as a cheap and simple way to transport small amounts of basic resources. I use them to transport ice to outposts which don't have any water. I use them to send a trickle of iron or copper for making meteor defence ammunition on site. I initially used them for sending out uranium for nuclear power plants as well before I started using beam power. I wouldn't want to transport material en masse with them, but they're good for small quantities. I did most of my bulk transport by rocket, since they are good for mass deliveries. Most of my raw resources were brought from Norvis to my space station by rocket, and in this context, raw resources includes all types of circuit, low density structures, and so on. The flexibility of being able to transport anything is extremely useful. If I built a new logistics route in late game, I'd go with spaceships from the start, because they don't require the extra logistics of rocket parts, but where I already had a rocket system set up, it didn't feel worth replacing it, at least until something went wrong with it or it needed expanding. In my current 0.6 run with Prastorio 2, I decided that in order to be a bit different, we wouldn't use rockets for mass resource supply, so we had the exotics all being shipped in by delivery cannon, with rockets only for bringing supplies from Norvis to Norbit, and for taking supplies out to build outposts. We then tried to rush spaceships, but with the increased difficulty of Crastorio, that took a bit longer than expected. We have now transitioned over to using elevators from all planets to their orbits, combined with spaceships to go from one orbit to another. These spaceships will bring out all the resources required on a planet, from sulphur to make acid, to the cables to keep the elevators working, and then transport back the resources and any byproducts that can be fed back into the processing system at the other end. All in all, there are lots of ways to transport supplies between planets. You'll probably find yourself working through most of them during a space exploration run, with different ones working best at different times or for different uses. Have you done anything very different, or perhaps an interesting implementation of a similar idea? Let me know in the comments or come along to the weekly stream and we can talk about it live. Thanks for watching.